Hi guys. It has turned into a fine winter afternoon here in the collapse of global industrial civilization out here in this undisclosed swamp on this collapsing planet and the little dog and I need to uh, go for a walk in the woods while we still can and before I do I I'm gonna return to Manga Bay where uh, you know I did my weekly roundup on Friday you know their laundry list when my ecological meltdown roundup but <coughs> I want to come back and revisit one of the many s stories I touched on in there uh, titled Study Warns of Biotic Annihilation Biotic Annihilation Driven by Hunting and Habitat Destruction as uh, we check out what is unfolding on this planet here in uh, the opening bell of 2021 uh, we have I think this case yeah this uh, this study brand new off the presses in 2021 about biotic annihilation <clears throat> humans are driving species to extinction 1,000 times faster than what is considered natural now new research underscores the extent of the planet's impoverishment extinctions do not just rob the planet of species but also of functional and phylogenetic diversity the authors of a paper published in the proceedings of the national academy of science argue i'm going to put the link to this uh, story and they will link you over to the full story so this is the lead author of uh, the study is Jedediah Brody, who is a conservation biologist at the University of Montana. And uh, we need to get Jedediah Brody on the show to find out more about this. Quote, these are much newer ideas, you know, biotic annihilation, I think is what he's talking about, are much newer ideas than species richness. So not as much exploration has been done about patterns of decline, <coughs> particularly globally. So we're going to look at rhinos. We're just taking rhinos as one example. For example, rhinos loom large in the public imagination, but are, in fact, marching into oblivion. The Bornean rhinoceros, a subspecies of the Sumatran rhino, has already gone extinct in Malaysia. Brody said, quote, it is such a tragedy because it's an iconic and culturally important species, but also because they are super important, both func functionally and phylogenetically, close quote. Uh, I guess phylogenetically means keeping the evolutionary tree from being pruned. Harvesting animals, and, and again, I was surprised by this, and this I really would like to talk to this fellow. Harvesting animals for subsistence, otherwise known as the bushmeat trade, otherwise known as killing our fellow earthlings to put them in the stew pot to eat and to I'm only trying to feed my family. So you go out there and eat another family of your fellow earthlings. There you go. Harvesting animals for subsistence or sale is the greatest threat to land-dwelling mammals, the new study found. About 15% of people in the world 
depend on wild animals, particularly vertebrates, for their food. But hunting, illegal and legal, also feeds the global supply chain for wildlife and wildlife parts. <coughs> so getting back to the rhinos, rhino populations plummeted in the second half of the 20th century. They are heavily poached for their horns, and their ranges have shrunk dramatically over the decades. Of the five existing rhino species, meaning the ones that haven't already been uh, sent into oblivion, three are now, three of the five existing rhino species alive today are now critically endangered, meaning they're going into oblivion, and then the two other species, the only two species of rhino, I'm sure which are both endangered, but not critically endangered, will soon follow them. Um, the study focused on terrestrial mammals, one of the most extensively studied groups. They used the IUCN Red List, the most widely cited and comprehensive compilation of endangered species and the threats they face. Okay, by removing animals from their habitats, you know, by killing them, assuming they don't remove the habitat along with the animals, uh, by removing animals from their habitats, humans also remove them from ecosystems in which they evolved and play critical roles. To gauge the consequences of this is not a simple calculus, quoting Dr. Brody. Quote, say there are 20 species of grazing animals and only two species of seed-eating animals. If two species of the grazers go extinct, that doesn't have that much impact on the functional diversity, uh, you know, of the ecosystem because there are still 18 grazers left. But if the two species of seed-eating animals go extinct, it has a huge impact on functional diversity because all of a sudden you have lost this entire ecological function, close quote, and this is this term that you hear batted around the doomosphere about being functionally extinct, where, you know, there's still a few of these living ghosts uh, walking around uh, the forest, but uh, they are no longer adding in anything to the functioning of the ecosystem. They're just waiting around to end up in the stew pot, and then we can cross them off the IUCN red list and send them into oblivion. And both of the above cases, you know, the two of the 18 versus two of the two, the species richness, the species richness, you know, of the ecosystem would you know, officially decrease by two, but the effects would be very different. I know this is real rocket science. Uh, despite their fearsome reputation and bulk, rhinos, some of which can weigh as much as two cars, are herbivores. Bornean rhinos are one of the few large-bodied frugivores which I think means fruit eater, frugivores and herbivores on Borneo, an island shared between Malaysia, Indonesia, and Brunei. It is also, Borneo is also home to another herbivore, the island's famous pygmy, pygmy elephants. However, rhinos eat different plants than the elephants eat. So losing them would alter plant seed dispersal and plant evolution. The research shows that extinctions driven by human activities 
lead to a more significant decline in functional diversity you know, of ecosystems than if species were randomly going extinct. Uh, this is Stuart Prim, an ecologist and leading authority on the extinction crisis who was not involved in the recent study. I have interviewed Stuart Pym before, so you can find that interview somewhere here on Collapse Chronicles. What does Stuart uh, have to say about all this? Quote, some species groups are very vulnerable. Be an antelope and people want to eat you. Be a parrot and people want you as a pet. Live only on Cuba as a subfamily of mammals does and you are in trouble. This leads to a disproportionate loss of ecological function as human actions drive species to extinction. Close quote. The disappearance of species does not just wipe away entire ecological functions. It also leads to the irredeemable loss of evolutionary history. Millions of years of evolution are encoded into species that still coexist with humans today. To lose them is to lose that biological inheritance. The disappearance of the remaining five rhino species, for instance, would sever an entire evolutionary lineage. A family that arose about 40 million years ago uh, from the tree of life said Brody, they, meaning the, the few rhinos left today, are the last remnants of what was a hugely diverse and amazing family found all across the world in the not too distant past, close quote. Uh, he points out that until recently, uh, there were more than 40 species of rhinos. And I'm not going to get into the, you know, the overkill uh, hypothesis and the megafaunal extinction. But uh, other than to say, of course, there, there used to be rhinos running all over the United States. Uh, what is today is the U.S., Canada, and, you know, all over the, the Western Hemisphere until strangely enough, uh, after humans got here, there were not uh, any rhinos left. And if we do get Dr. Brody on the show, I want to get his opinion on what caused the megafaunal extinction. Was it humans or was it climate change. All right. Conservationists warn that it is not just wholesale, I love it, wholesale extinctions that we should be worried about, but also disappearing populations of species, what Brody and his co-authors call biotic annihilation. Only one in every 10 dramatic declines in populations results in extinctions or has resulted in extinctions. But those losses have repercussions for ecosystems which experience them. Uh, quoting Brody, species extinction is an end point and it is a really, really bad end point. Before that happens, species will start to go extinct in individual countries first. The focus on population decline is really important because it is in some ways a better illustrator of the magnitude of the extinction crisis, close quote. Uh, their research maps out the relationship between richness, between species richness and functional and phylogenetic loss for individual countries. 
I love this, to aid national level policy making. Oh yeah. The work shows that habitat destruction results in more functional diversity loss, you know, in places like Indonesia, Argentina, and Venezuela. Uh, quote, this suggests that instead of focusing on harvest management and human diets, conservation actions in these areas might be better directed toward protected areas, oh yes, protected areas and land use policy to best conserve this component of biodiversity. I would love to uh, talk to this man about the joke, the myth of protected areas on the planet. And we cannot have a discussion without talking about the dark horse uh, in the extinction crisis. The study also found that climate change is emerging as a major driver of biodiversity loss. Uh, this is where I agree with Book Hermit that right now it is too many people literally eating our fellow earthlings and uh, destroying their habitat, which are the two big causes of uh, the sixth mass extinction. It is outright killing of our fellow earthlings and destroying their habitat they need to survive in. But climate change with each passing year, climate change is going to become a bigger and bigger and bigger threat. And uh, so, you know, as I say, climate change is the dark horse that is, is you know, whatever uh, humans just acting like humans don't do directly. If there is anything left by the end of this century, climate change is going to take them out. And don't forget, what remains to be seen what remains to be seen is how these relationships pan out for other animal groups like reptiles, amphibians, and birds. Well, they're, they're going to play out the, the same way that they're playing out uh, with mammals. They're going in the damn stew pot. Uh, they're being sold. Uh, if they're not being sold for food, uh, they're being sold for the pet trade or the wildlife parts trade and their habitat. Uh, just like these big keystone species, the terrestrial mammals, as go uh, the terrestrial mammals, so go every other species uh, of earthling on the planet as the biological annihilation uh, on planet Earth heads into full steam overdrive uh, in 2021. Uh, th this is one of the easiest uh, chronicles of the collapse. It's a no-brainer for a someone chronicling the collapse of a planet. Uh, you look at the big <clears throat> mammals. And uh, for every one of them that marches into oblivion uh, or gets booted into oblivion by humans, I'm sure you, you can throw in how many other species uh, along with them. Uh, and there is one reason for it all, or should I say there's eight billion reasons but uh, at least until I go extinct, uh, I'm going to try to get out there and enjoy it while I still can. So the little dog and I, we're going to go take our daily hike in the forest uh, and try to avoid the feral hogs. You know, the one large terrestrial mammal uh, other than humans 
that we want to eradicate. Uh, we we can't eat. We we can't kill enough. We cannot kill and eat enough of the one large terrestrial mammal uh, <laughs> that we try to. Anyway, get out there and enjoy your terrestrial mammals while you still can as I avoid getting trampled by a wild hog. Bye guys.